G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. We are here on Golden Pit in the brand new patch. It has arrived and some civilizations have received nerfs. Big nerf. Now, I think there have been a couple of buffs in there, but for the most part, it was just basically addressing power creep and both of these civilizations got hit hard. Today, we'll find out whether those changes were a little bit too drastic or whether they were exactly on point. Let's get into it. Spawning in on the east side of the map in the color blue, playing as the Juicy Legacy, we've got Balu. And on the west side of the map in the color orange, playing as Jean of Arc, we've got Fei Chan. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Golden Pit. If you're enjoying this Age of Empires 4 content, make sure you leave a like on the video. It really helps out the traction of the content. Now let's talk a little bit about this matchup. This is a matchup, of course, that we will be intimately familiar with. These two civilizations quite popular over the last couple of months. Of course, initially, Joan of Arc, everybody went up in arms and said, this civilization's broken. Devs, how could you possibly release something so broken? And then the Juicy Legacy was just sitting there on the back line quietly minding its own business until finally everybody realized well that's actually kind of broken and indeed it was uh but there have been a number of nerfs that have hit both of these civilizations now for joan the main nerf is going to be focused towards the the hero unit herself joan of arc and what they've done is they've looked to bring her power down in the feudal age when she reaches that level three so typically we will see her get on her cavalry unit and she'll send out her men at arms and then all of a sudden she's just this damage sponge right you can't kill her you, you've got 27 crossbows they laugh or the, the uh, rather joan laughs because uh, you can't kill her so that's essentially what they've done they've addressed that power uh, and then on the other side for the juicy legacy there's a number of early game changes they've made uh specifically with regard to the meditation gardens of course one of the best landmarks in i'm, I'm pretty tempted to say of all time it was just absolutely insane. And even right now, I'm, I'm just looking for, you know, crazy good spawns that, that might exist. I don't really see too much. I think down around here might be the best one for Balu. So I'm curious to see exactly where he looks to take this. That doesn't look like he's picked up his tax just yet. So he might be a little bit late on that age up. You can see he's about to cross that threshold right now. Balu, you got to wake yourself up, son. On the other side, though, School of Cavalry in the back of the base. Of course, just looking to build it with Joan of Arc herself just to maximize that experience bonus. Let's check in right now with Balu and see how he's doing. Balu, are you, are you, is he asleep at the wheel? Have a look at this. He's just saving up all the resources. There we go. Village is now going to move out. He's taking the ones off gold. So going to be going towards that top side here. Let's have a look and see where he puts this. There he goes. So he's going between the double stone. Oh, he's changed his mind. No, he hasn't. He's gone for the exact same spot. He's got to be careful, though. There is a boar in play here. And if Faye realizes this, does she spot it? She spots the boar. She sees the villagers, and I think she's realized. Look, yeah, you can see she's coming onto the other side. She can leash the boar. Oh, no, 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 no. You've got yourself trouble in paradise right now, Balu. Yep, he realizes that things are about to get a little bit sour. And the boar now immediately coming in. It cancels the landmark. Have a look at that. Takes a little bit of damage. Beautiful stuff coming out from Faye, delaying that age up even further. That is absolutely ludicrous. And now we'll opt for this back position. I, I definitely think this was the right call from the beginning. I mean, double stone is nice, obviously. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's a pretty far away landmark. Good luck defending that one. Uh, especially when you, when you consider that there's this little hill that you can probably get picked off on. But uh, Meditation Garden is going to come down a little bit slower. Not a huge loss here for Balu, but it will delay him. And especially considering that uh, what well, we, we are likely to see early aggression coming out of Fey playing on that Joan of Arc civilization. So some of the changes uh, that you will notice today uh, for Balu in particular on the Meditation Gardens is this circle is no longer as big as it used to be. It's slightly smaller. So it, it was uh, eight tiles before. I think it's down to seven tiles now. So it's picking up less resources, which means that you'll always have to go for tighter clumps. Uh, and the other thing that it's doing is it's also a reduced amount of income for each resource. So your trees will stay the same, but your gold, your stone, slightly reduced, your berries slightly reduced as well. So a really nice way to bring that in into a little bit more parity for other civilizations. On the other side of the map, though, Faye, with that age up coming through, is now going to be looking to take stone. No real surprise here. Often, whenever I'm coaching over on uh, on Patreon, one of the things that I often talk about, which if you'd like to check out, make sure uh, you check the link in the description. Plenty of free content out over there. Uh, but one of the things I do whenever I'm coaching the French or, or Jean of Arc is I always talk about this opening right here. Beautiful wheelbarrow opening into that very early night coming out from the town center or from the uh, from the landmark rather and then into that town center that second town center is really key here uh, because we want to try and get that economy booming 
Um, and I think in this matchup against the Juicy Legacy, you can probably even get away with a third town center just because they're probably going to be doing the same thing. So it's nice to say stay on par with them uh, because they will almost certainly be going for a third TC just because for the Juicy Legacy, it is super duper easy for them to do it. Uh, but Age Ups have now come through. Song Dynasty for Balu has arrived and the transition to a huge amount of villagers on stone has well and truly been done. Uh, I, I think what's likely to happen here is though you'll see the town center put down right next to the stone and the villagers will probably go straight back to the stone. Uh, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Knight down to the south side coming through for Faye. Keep in mind, she hasn't actually uh, spotted out any villagers yet to target. Normally that's one of the big things that you'll do as the, as the French or as Joan of Arc is you're looking for those villagers. So you've got an eye on them with your scout and then the knight can just run in easily. But I guess th this will be just as just as good. She'll be coming in around the backside. You can see it does look like she will spot out these villagers on the mill, but it's very close to the town center. So they won't have much room to go. Town center will get thrown down. So not, oh yeah. I'm, I'm curious about that positioning. Okay, he's gonna, he'll bring it a little bit more closer to that gold mine. But uh, still not that close. And I think he's left enough space in here intentionally just so that he can wrap around some farms or something like this. Six minutes, 12. Not the earliest of town centers, but uh, look, he, he got interrupted. He, he had a little bit of a fiasco over here on this top side. And Faye just coming out of the gates uh, very, very, uh, very, very uh, heavily. Let's just put it that way. And villagers are indeed moving straight back to the stone. Uh, so exactly what we suspected, uh, that 3TC opening. Now, how is Balu doing on the scouting side of things? I know the scout's back in his base, but I'm curious to know exactly what he knows. And the reality is that we just can't know that with the current way the game is coded. Or I don't, I don't know if it's a coding issue or whatever it is, but we don't know what he's spotted. Uh, but I'm suspecting he's probably spotted the stone outcropping. And as soon as you spot the stone outcropping coming up, uh, or the mining camp on the stone outcropping, you will know, okay, that's two TCs. So naturally he's going to say, okay, well, I'm going to go for a third TC just because I can, because my TCs are cheaper, because my civilization is faster, because it's it's a, it's a just a very strong civilization. Let's, let's check in on the meditation gardens though and see how much lower it is than what we normally expect. So 36 food a minute. 25 uh, gold a minute so you're talking about 61 resources and 21 so they brought that down 61 so what 82 82 resources a minute that's that's not too bad right like that that's a lot more it's a lot fairer than what it used to be that is for sure uh so this is this is nice uh bore up towards the top side it's not showing on the minimap just simply because he has reached the the leash maximum uh and that, that was always a little bit of a bug and i think that actually got banned in tournament game did Faye go for the archer Oh, she did too. Oh, that's kind of weird. I'm not going to lie. I I don't know, man. I don't know. Archer, Joan of Arc. Ah, I'm, I'm still on the fence about it. Let's see if Faye can sell it to us today. I'm curious. What, what do you, How do you guys feel about this? Uh, you know, because Joan has been nerfed in a number of ways. One of, one of the other ways that she's been nerfed is that uh, the wolves no longer count uh, for her. So before she used to get experience from the wolves, uh, she does not get experience from the wolves now, but she will, of course, get a little bit of experience from the boar. Um, she can always look to move in and maybe hit the gold vein. Problem is your opponent's got gold veins in the back and they are walling up. Um, so you, you can always come through with, you know, a precision strike. What's it called? Divine arrow, rather. Uh, and, and and look to try and hit that, uh, try and hit that, that those villagers on the gold. Uh, but the third TC will come up. It's in the back of the base. And the stone, probably not going to be spotted out just yet. Now, this is pretty standard, I, I would say, for this kind of this kind of game. But one of the things that we now see Faye doing, and I'm loving this. This is one of the things I always talk about whenever I'm coaching, is the, the single knight, the wheelbarrow, the two TCs, and then, of course, straight away, production out the wazoo. Absolutely love it. And this is such a, a, a cool way to play as well, because from Faye's perspective, she's setting herself up for, for the late game. She's got the two town centers down. And she's now making sure that she's not going to die from any kind of silly shenanigans where maybe my opponent's just going to make a whole lot of units and, and catch me off guard. So this will give her flexibility in that she can go to the castle age. It'll give her flexibility if she wants to stay in the feudal age for a little bit longer. And that's definitely what I advocate for. And you can see right there exactly what we were talking about when it comes to the divine arrow. So much damage on that villager. A single attack and then divine arrow straight afterwards and then another attack to follow it up. And there's barely any reaction time that can happen right there. So Balu finding out the hard way that Faye has opted for the hunter version. Is it the hunter? I think it's the hunter. Yeah, the hunter. The hunter version of Joan of Arc, rather than the uh, the the woman at arms version. Villagers being moved out to the back. 18 villagers here, by the way. Have a look at that. Blacksmith now being thrown down, making sure not to forget those important upgrades. And you'll see a nice mix of Zhukunu together with spears. 
One of the things to note, though, in this matchup, you've got to be extra careful about staying Feudal Age for too long as the Juicy Legacy. It can be tough because you want, you ideally want to wait for your opponent to age up before you age up when you're playing into this matchup. But the longer they stay in Feudal Age, the more at risk you are because their Knights have got three armor while you only do four damage as for your Zhukunu. So it means that you're doing very little damage to these Royal Knights. And you can see right here just how ineffective they will be at, at doing that damage. Plus one range attack is coming through now for Balo. She's doing a great job with the macro, but speaking of macro, have a look at this. Faye looks like she might be macroing for that castle age timing. So far, she's got all of her eco upgrades. She's got both of her town centers down, plenty of production. She's looking really good. One of the things I'd love to see from Faye here is throwing down a keep over aggressively on her opponent's side, even in the middle, like somewhere around here, just to deny out gold, just to get, get herself a nice little base beginning to build. Uh, that, that's always really, really handy, especially on a map like this where there's limited gold supply. Now, of course, for the Juicy Legacy, they've got plenty of gold, right? Like 4k gold plus 8k gold here. So, well, not, 4, not 4k plus 8k, but 4k plus 4 play. Oh my god, it's 8k. 8k in the base, but then you've also got the Imperial officials that are collecting the gold. That's another important factor to note. Uh, no relics safely behind these walls, so they're, they're probably... Or we'll go to the player that ages up first, which at this stage looks like it's going to be Faye. And indeed it is as the guild hall goes down. But don't hold your breath. It looks like Balu might be thinking about doing the same thing here. The number of units are looking pretty decent. He's going to spot out these units in the stealth forest with that scout. Both of the scouts able to see each other. And now Faye going to be heading back. Definitely the right call. And it, it's quite interesting to me that she's going for a spearman archer combo as well. So not looking to go into knights at all. Just going to be playing it the good old classic way. Almost like the, the Abbasid way, really, it feels like. Um, this is the, the way that you play against the Abbasid. You, you don't uh, go for a lot of cavalry. Just simply because the camels are, are too damn good. They're too damn strong. But Jukunu now going to start moving out. Keep in mind, plus twos will be coming in shortly after that age up. Expect to see veterancy as well. Now that scout going to get eliminated from the battle. 12 minutes into this game, we'll switch over to income per minutes. Get a bit of an idea on where these two sit. Looks like Faye at the moment. Uh, let's have a look and, and see. She's about uh, 19 or 1700 resources a minute compared to Balu, who is well and truly above it. Nice little uh, divine shot coming out right there. Divine arrow. Jeez, it's hard for me to remember the name of divine arrow. I don't know why. A little bit of a rushed outpost. No, no chance in getting that one up. And look at this push coming to shove right now. Age up is through. And now we'll start to see the pressure getting applied. Faye reaching that castle age. Veterancy on the way through. Plus one ranged attack only coming through now. Expect to see Balu look to try and focus down Jonah. And you can see just how smart he is bringing... Or Faye is so smart just uh, bringing back the, the Joan of Arc right here. And uh, nice little defense for the moment. Big Balu realizing, oh, I've, I've got a lot of units here, but I've got to be careful. Men at Arms now going to be coming out. Keep in mind, these guys will be able to, uh, to get focused down by the... Uh, the Jukunu, but the key here is these archers on the back basically go through um, and don't receive any damage. So you're getting all, all of this free damage off with these archers as long as these Jukunu uh, are uh, turning around and firing at the men at arms. Um, so Faye definitely making the right call there, but Balu feeling it definitely feels like he might be a, quite a bit ahead. And have a look at the village account. Why is he so far ahead? I know he's gone for two T two TC versus three TC. But still, I don't feel like it should be that much of an advantage at the moment. That feels like quite a lot. Uh, so, how long have they had TCs up for? About seven minutes? Seven minutes? Uh, yeah, I guess maybe it probably is, isn't it? It's an extra three a minute. Uh, so, I guess that makes sense. An, an extra three bills a minute. That's that, that's actually correct. There you go. All right. Well, the age up has now come through as well for Baloo. He's gone with the Mount Lu Academy. No real surprise here. We've definitely seen, uh, ever since the Shaolin Monk... Uh, nerf came through. We've definitely seen them fall off quite a bit in relevance. Uh, I think juicy players are just kind of realizing I don't have to go for this landmark. I can just put down. Uh, I can just put down my my uh, my monastery and then just get my my monks out that way. And I think that's definitely the right call. Um, it, it, it doesn't really offer much in the way any, of uh, flexibility anymore. All right, towards that south side, royal knight just going to be camping up the gate in anticipation of of uh, any kind of religious units out of the gate. And we know that towards the top side, Joan is now capturing up that sacred site. That'll be the first one in the game. Second one on the other side of the map. Bit of a run. I'm curious to see whether Faye actually sends it or not. Plus two ranged armor. Going to be coming through here as well for Faye. And the guild hall is now on food. So there you go. Count it out on the guild hall. Expect to see that pulled out. She could actually go for an imperial age with that. That's something that we saw Don Ardy do quite often. He would look to gather up a whole bunch of gold and then click that button for 2,000 food and then would just immediately hit Imperial Age. Uh, 
Uh, but uh, we do see a bit of a build-up coming through in the middle, and there is plenty of stone being gathered. I think she might be contemplating the prospect of a keep in the center of the map. Definitely going to be a very smart call. And have a look at this wall towards the top side. This is a bit of a weird wall, isn't it? What, what is this wall all about? I guess Balu is just trying to look to segment off the map. But one of the, the things that you do when you do this is you, you do make your walls quite exposed, right? Like it's very, very close to the base of Faye. So don't be surprised if she sends a couple units up there to just siege it down. And of course, it's further away for you to actually defend it. Gives you a little bit of time, I guess. But uh, yeah, it, it's, it's tough. It's tough. All right, Balu. Now going to be looking to try and face off against Faye. Veterans are yet to come through for the Zhukunu, but plus two range Dharma is... Immediately, we see Joan of Arc getting picked off there by the Zhukunu. They've got plus two ranged attack, but now crossbows are going to start coming in. So the mix of spear, crossbow. And this was my fear about uh, essentially the way that the meta would go. Uh, and this is something that I alluded to in the patch review video, is that I've got a feeling that it is just going to be very much crossbow spear now. Uh, especially after the the, uh, the sprinkled nerf, which I think was the, the patch before. But just the fact that they now take more shots uh, to, to kill mangonels. It gives mangonels a little bit more time uh, to get their shots off before they die, which can be the big, can be a big difference. So I think if anything, spear crossbow is going to be strong, but making sure that you back them up with some mangonels uh, and springles is going to be extra, extra important. But uh, we'll wait and see exactly how both of these players look to play as Arbolatria are starting to come out onto the field. No spearmen just yet for Faye, but there are plenty of men at arms for that front line. And that's going to be a keep going down Definitely leaves a little bit of the gold open, but neutralizing, I'd say about three, three out of the six gold pit, gold mines in the middle. So not too bad at all. Probably will need to think about adding in a second keep a little bit later, but definitely the right call here. Have a look at how many units are out here. That's going to be the second relic picked up as well for Faye. She's doing well in this game. But speaking of relics getting picked up, Balu not going to be dropping the ball in that regard. Looking to pick up his own. Balu with quite a, an advantage when it comes to economies, but you can see that it's still only about 20 villages the difference. This is why I was a bit curious before, you know, it, it felt strange that, that Faye was behind by so many villages, but now we start to see those men at arms looking to move out. This is part of the reason why we see spear crossbow as the combo and not men at arms crossbow, because the men at arms actually get destroyed by the crossbows. Uh, whereas the spears, they're a lot cheaper, so you can have more of them coming out. Nice little divine arrow coming out once again there. You'll see it glowing. It makes a nice little sound for you as well. And Balu got to be careful because that Joan, she's on the backside. Look at her dealing out that damage. There's another quick shot coming off. Look at that no scope, 100 damage. She's actually one shotting crossbows with that. That's pretty impressive when you think about it. Ablatria on the back. Uh, where are the Ablatria? Actually, they, they're yet to come out. Uh, there's there's five of them. I, I just, I'm, I'm blind. I just don't see them. Uh, they're, get, they're getting absolutely destroyed here. Needed to put down that Pavis. The Pavis is going to give them five ranged armor. Uh, and, and that would be a huge way to swing this fight. Uh, to be honest, right now, all Faye needs to do is just go into a huge amount of, uh, of Ablatria. And she should be fine, right? At least that's the way I, I would think of it. In fact, do we see... Like, French slash Joan of Arc just being crazy good right now because of how, how strong the crossbow is? Isn't... Is that possible? It's probably possible. I think it is. You could probably just get away with going, like, mass... What, what would you even do? Like, a handful of spears, lots of Arbolatria. Get all of your Arbolatria upgrades. Dude, I, I so want to play French. I'm actually... Do I just become a French main? Man. This civilization... Ah, dude, I just want to main all the civilizations. They're, they're all so much fun. That's what I love about Age of Empires 4. They're so... The civs are so different. They've all got different things that, you know, that, that they all offer to you. And, and to me, there's just so many things that jump out. I'm like, oh, I like that. You know, I, I really like the fact that I could just make only Arbolatria and win the game. That, that to me, is very fun. Uh, but uh, we'll have to wait and see how Faye plays it. Keep in mind, you get that extra little bit of range as well. Uh, plus one tile of range. Uh, but we do now start to see a keep coming down for Balu. Very important timing. You can see that his gold is uh, about to run out. He's at 2.6k gold, but note the amount of villagers he's got on it. So there's probably about a minute or two left on that. Uh, but the keep, there's plenty of villagers on it. I don't think there's any way this doesn't get up. Even if you ran at him at, a, at 100 miles an hour right now, he's still going to get that keep up, unfortunately. So it will mean Faye may have to think about moving into... Perhaps, oh, oh lord, do you see what, you, do you see what I see? Uh, might have to think about moving into trebuchets just to get the juicy player off the gold. Nesta B's big shots coming through and Faye immediately having to fall back here. Villagers jump into the keep. You can see just how much damage is being done. The machine gun keep is online. So 
at the moment. Faye about 30 villagers behind her opponent. Relic advantage, 4-1, to one, and she's got the Sacred Sight as well. Is it going to be enough to make up the difference? Probably not, but the one thing to note is if this game does go late, Faye will have the advantage when it comes to gold. Just four relics against one is always a good feeling. When, with regard to economy, it's looking like Faye is a little bit over 4,000 resources a minute at the moment. Compared to Balu, who's sitting at quite a bit more than that. So Balu sitting at about, what do we got here? About 45, 46, maybe even 4,700. Double counterweight trebs already out you can expect that there's going to be a supervised siege workshop back here somewhere i don't see it but uh i'm confident it would be there and have a look at this beautiful farmland that's coming through right now as well uh there it is there's the siege workshop that was being supervised so now this is where it gets tough because how do you deal with these trebs to deal with these trebs you need sprinkles right you could try and dive this with knights or try and dive it with horsemen but let's be honest it's not going to happen uh, so you need some sort of springle to take this out. The problem is there's a keep in the middle. So now you have to deal with the keep first. So we need to repair this keep, and then we need to get trebs of our own to take down the enemy's keep. And now we're kind of locked in this battle where we're killing each other's keeps, and we're also repairing our own keeps. And it's about attrition, really. So you just have to get villagers out on a stone, and then get villagers to the middle to make sure that they can maintain the repair. Because we've got springles out, but just remember what good is a springled if all of these trebuchets are happily sitting behind this keep. And that's where it gets difficult. Now, the Springles will be very helpful against the Nest of Bees, which it's my suspicion they will rise to the top in this patch. In, in the, the way that this mode works now, uh, the fact that they, they take an extra shot to kill, uh, it is, at least if I remember correctly, they take an extra shot to kill. Let's just do some quick math. 92 damage, because they get plus 2 damage from the, uh, from the uh, Blacksmith upgrade. 92 damage, okay, against 30. So 62 damage. So you're doing 124 damage. And these guys have got 140. So there you go. Do they get ranged armor as well from the uh, from plus one? They don't, by the looks of it. All right, Age Up about to come through as well from Balu. Pushing underneath the keep. Faye going to be looking for it. And look at, have a look at that. Focusing down the hero unit with the keep. Village is going to be forced to evacuate. Nest of bees on that backside. Trebuchet's running for dear life as the sacred site message just comes into the middle of our screen and well, thank you so much game for letting us know yes to be still tearing off doing a wonderful job on the back no real response to them at the moment as the keep stands strong and forces those springles to stay back and you can see the keep is now going to focus the springled back as or focus the springled down and that is part of the reason why you need to take out this keep first the other way that you, Faye could have gone about it is with battering rams. If she researches siege engineering, then what she can do is that exact same thing, but next time just have four or five battering rams, and that will be enough to push her opponent off this position. But additional keeps now going to be coming up towards the south side, and Faye going to be stretched here, I think, quite a bit. She's only down 14 villagers, so the economy is okay. The issue I've got is siege tempo. How does she deal with Siege Tempo now that her opponent is Imperial Age and there's going to be Roller Shutter Triggers that is imminently coming through, as we can see, 45 seconds to go. One of the best technologies in the game is about to get better because now your, uh, your Springles fire faster and they fire further. That's the real big thing. So these units are about to get serious buffs from this upgrade. Elite Crossbows are through. Roller Shutter Triggers being supervised out as well. Have a look at this. Another seven seconds to go. And with that, you can lead the way with your Springholds. Now, Springholds uh, do 32... Oh, they, what do we got here? I, I'm just still going to have to math it out. Actually, they, they'll be able to two-shot enemy Springholds because they've only got 10 armor. Uh, and now that you've got that extra little bit of range as well, she will get that... Or he'll get the heads up. He'll fall back. Brings the Nest of Bees forward. Faye's going to make a decision. She'll go onto the Nest of Bees. But you can see the response is immediate. Now the Nest of Bees getting some massive shots on that center of, of uh, the army. Nest of Bees still looking. A couple of uh, Springholds still out here. Will get picked off if, if she's not careful. And you can see just how important Siege has become in these games. And now all of a sudden, with no Siege to her name bar, a couple of trebuchets, Faye heads into the battle, but look at the Nest of Bees! Absolute destruction! Gone are the days where you can mess up Arbolatria. They were quick, they were about 13 minutes at best. But unfortunately, you're going to need to bring Springles to the party, and you can see them just getting absolutely obliterated before there's even a chance to respond. And now, as a result, I mean, how do you even go? How do you even move forward from here? This is so difficult from Faye. 
because th there's really no response. Her opponent's Imperial Age, Roller Shutter Triggers is in, and you just can't contest Roller Shutter Triggers. That's the reality. The, the Crossbow are way too capable of defending against this, or defending this Siege Ball, and that's really what makes it so difficult. So I'm confident that this is going to be the go-to combo that we're going to see for at least the next couple of uh, next couple of weeks, I suspect. Uh, it, is, it is going to be rare to see anything outside of it. And I know people might be thinking, okay, but Drongo, what about Cavalry? Well, Cavalry is fine, except for the fact that you just mix in a couple Spearmen and you're absolutely hunky-dory. Uh, that's that's really the issue because I, I think the, ma the main problem... Oh, jeez, there it is. There's the game. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Exhibit A for Crossbow Spear together with some Mangoes and Springles. Come and get it. Wow, that was uh, that was an impressive game coming out from Balu there. 3 TC into the 2 TC. Guys, I'll leave a link in the description of where you can go and watch Faye. Check her out. I'll leave it down there. Uh, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.